Hey everybody, Father Wane here. We continue with uh, the prophet Micah. I told you that we are in the 15th week in ordinary time and this Saturday uh, we will begin the prophet Micah and then in the 16th week, the following week we will do uh, on Monday and Tuesday we will hear readings also from the prophet Micah. The prophet Micah is seven chapters. Uh, I plan to do them uh, as much as I can. I thought I'd do two chapters today but I was caught up with several other things so I'm just going to do chapter one. Now for those of you who have uh, not heard the introduction please do that. I did the recording yesterday just look for the introduction to Micah and you will get a, a good understanding of the background of the prophet. It's very important to know who the prophet is, where he comes from. So Micah is a prophet from the southern kingdom which had uh, two tribes, its capital was Jerusalem and Micah lived at a period uh, as we are told in chapter 1 verse 1 uh, over that spanned three kings from the south. Uh, he therefore <coughs> also happened to witness the destruction of the northern kingdom. He saw the northern kingdom being taken over by Assyria and he also experienced uh, the might of Assyria at the doorstep of Jerusalem. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so here was a prophet now who brings God's word and this is a prophet who speaks across the board from priest to professional prophets to the rich to the mighty to the merchants. He's basically um, a country bumpkin as one would call him from a small town as we are called uh, from Morishet. Morishet was about uh, 32 to 40 kilometers southwest of Jerusalem and he is called from uh, the village into the city. He's horrified really what he sees in the city and therefore he preaches against it. Um, as I said yesterday, Micah really means uh, his full form uh, would have been Mika Yahu. Uh, who is like our God, words that we will see in the prophet Micah itself. Now let's take the book uh, chapter by uh, chapter and verse and I'm going to cover chapter 1 today. So the word of the Lord that came to Micah of Morishet. So straight away it's very interesting to see many of the other prophets were known as uh, by their father's uh, name. In this case we are told this, the village from where he comes and we are told the kings who ruled uh, at that point of time. So we have three kings, Jotham, Ahaz, who we know uh, was the worst of the kings of the southern kingdom, worst because he introduced um, the worship of Baal. Uh, he made an alliance with the Assyrians against his own brothers in the north, the northern kingdom. So the Assyria, uh, sorry, Syria and Israel made an alliance together. And then in the south, you have Judah making an alliance with Assyria. Now, when you did that, you had to accept their God. So Ahaz permitted uh, the worship of Yahweh and the worship of the Assyrian gods side by side. And one of his uh, most vociferous critics was the prophet Isaiah. He is also joined by the prophet Micah. So you had King Jotham, then his son Ahaz, and then uh, King Hezekiah, who... Uh, quite interestingly brought in a great amount of reform in the southern kingdom, religious reform. So the three kings of Judah under uh, in, in whose time Micah prophesied. Now the prophecy as we are told in chapter 1 verse 1 is concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Notice it's both the capitals of the northern kingdom. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom Israel and Jerusalem was the capital of the southern kingdom. So uh, straight away, even though he was a prophet from the southern kingdom, prophesying against the southern kingdom, uh, he will also speak out against Samaria and um, no sooner does he da do that, we know by 721 Assyria was completely, uh, sorry, uh, Israel in the northern kingdom was destroyed by the Assyrians. Now, let's go to verse 2. Hear you, O peoples. We're going to hear this word, hear you the call uh, to open your ears and listen. We're going to see this in chapter 1 verse 2, in chapter 3 verse 1 and chapter 6 verse 1. Some commentators think that this 
uh, could be a good definition to divide the book but we have done it as I did yesterday in four sections yeah uh, I spoke of oracles of doom then oracles of restoration then oracles of doom and finally again oracles of restoration so chapter one is part of the oracles of doom so here you people of Israel's all you people and I, I like this you know that you know there is a tendency to exclude ourselves from prophecy as if prophecy is meant for only one bunch of you know terrible people who live on this earth no God is speaking to everyone because we stand in line of judgment many of us have this self-righteous attitude God is calling us to be righteous not self-righteous so this self-righteous attitude that I do not stand in need of God's grace is a terrible attitude where you know uh, I think this message that Father Warner preached was for my neighbor if you have that kind of attitude when you listen to a homily if you think oh this is for my I know who I should forward this to yeah I know exactly who I should forward this to then you have a problem because then you exclude yourself yeah you think you are better than everybody else and none of us are so here you people all of you listen O earth and all that is in it God is calling everyone to listen because he has this message for all and let the word of God be a witness against you why the word of God because the word of God is true the word of God is not false we are not calling false witnesses against you Samaria and Jerusalem that's what uh, Micah is saying we are bringing the very word of God by which you should have lived to be a witness against you so we are not packing uh, you know uh, the the uh, the court with false witnesses we are packing the court with every line of prophecy and scripture that was said against you the so and let the word and let the Lord God be a witness against you the Lord from his holy temple for lo the Lord is coming out of his place he is coming out of heaven and I'm going to make this comment a little while later God is coming down from heaven for what because this sin because transgression is a serious business now make the link to Jesus Jesus came from heaven you came from heaven to the earth for what because my transgressions was so great my sin was so great and so God in order to heal in fact uh, we will hear the words that that in verse 9 this is a disease sin is a disease it's a wound that is incurable so God had to leave his throne in heaven to come down to earth to heal us and that is the dim, you know the, the 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 magnitude of a sinful life it's not a small thing we we tend to trivialize sin sin cannot be trivialized and he will come down and when he does that what is he going to do he is going to tread upon the high places of the earth what are we talking about in this case the high places were the temples that were made to false gods these for the people of Israel of Judah had become their high places and God says I will come down from my heavens and I will trample all the little high places that you're making in your life verse 4 then the mountains will melt under him and the valleys will burst open like wax near the fire like water poured down a steep place so what is he really saying he's saying if the mountains and the valleys stand no chance if they melt like wax that is kept like a like a fire or waters poured down a steep place then you Israel you Samaria so this really from verse 2 is addressed to Samaria we will see from verse 8 onwards it will be addressed to Judah but right now God is saying to Samaria if the mountains don't stand a chance do you think you will stand a chance I will melt you down you will be melted down so um, Micah is really evaluating the society that he lived in which was really as I said in verse 8 which is described as afflicted with the deadly disease the deadly disease being this disease of sin and therefore you will see from verse 5 all the way to 16 
Micah is lamenting and wailing. We will come to uh, verse 8 where thrice you will hear the word uh, lament or mourn. Uh, so Micah is mourning. Uh, it's literally as somebody called it. Uh, I was reading a, a, a text from Father, the late Father Leslie Ratis and he called it a wailing yatra. Literally he said the wailing will go from one city to the other and you'll see this. Yeah, from verse 10 onwards, you'll see one city after the other is going to wail because God is going to come down with all his might. So from, let's, let's, let's carry on. Then the mountains will melt. Okay, we did that verse 4. Let's go to verse 5. All this is for the transgression of Jacob. So you keep asking, well, why is everything happening to me? Why is everything going wrong? But you transgressed enough for God to leave his heaven and come down and have to, you know, crush you. And then you ask, well, why is all this happening? So God says, all this is because of the transgression of Jacob. And for the sins of the house of Israel, God is not saying because you were badly behaved. He says, I have to come down because of your sins. Now, when we, were talk when we talk about the sins of the house of Israel, God was really mad at leadership. Political, religious, merchants, um, the priests, the prophets, they were the ones. Really, this book was not, was not really aimed at the ordinary people, but more at leadership. And because leadership was corrupt, Therefore, even the people learn to be corrupt. I always say this, if our hierarchy is corrupt, we teach, um, you know, we teach uh, everybody down in the parish also to be corrupt. Yeah, what you say is what your children do. I'm reminded of that mother who told her little daughter, uh, maybe if that Auntie Mary calls, just tell her on the phone that mommy is not at home. And Auntie Mary called and the little girl said, Auntie Mary, mommy said to tell you that she said she's not at home. Yeah? So when you tell a lie and then tomorrow you ask your child, why did you lie? You taught your child to lie very clearly. So that's the same thing that we are discussing here. So uh, Samaria will ask, well, what did we do? Yeah? What is the transgression of Jacob? And God says, is it not Samaria? Is it not your life, what you have done? Yeah? And what is the high place of Judah? Is it not Jerusalem? So um, here is... Micah, really a small town man who's shocked by the wickedness of these great cities of Samaria and uh, Jerusalem, the collusion of society. And this is a very dangerous thing. When society colludes, you know, uh, while studying church history, one of the things I always teach is the collusion of the monarchy, the collusion of the merchants and the collusion of the religious class. When these three get together, you have a deadly combination. And very often, even till today, these are the three classes that collude together. Just look in our country and you'll see these three classes work together. The collusion of society brings about the perversion of society. It brings about the destruction of the poor. So verse 6, therefore, I will make Samaria a heap of in the open country. And that happened in 721. BC when the Assyrians came and destroyed the northern kingdom it will become a place for planting vineyards meaning to say it's not a city anymore it will be ignored I will pour down her stones into the valley and uncover her foundations God is saying I will dig even your foundations I will not leave a stone upon a stone I will take even your foundations away verse 7 and all her images that she was worshipping shall be beaten to pieces all her wages shall be burned with a fire and all her idols i will lay waste for as the wages of a prostitute she gathered them israel prostituted herself to all the other nations and worshiped their other gods a theme very similar to hosea remember hosea chapter 1 where god asked hosea to take gomer a loose woman a woman who uh, adulteress maybe even a prostitute to bear three children as an object lesson to the people at that time. So for the wages of a prostitute, she gathered them and as the wages of a prostitute, they shall again be used. Now, verse 8 onwards is doom for the cities of the southern kingdom. So now we really come to, as it were, uh, what you heard was a, was a trailer. 
this was for the northern kingdom. Uh, Micah was not really concerned about the northern kingdom, but he was really concerned about the southern kingdom, his own people. So now you're going to get the main show. Okay, so uh, again, Micah is going to be an object lesson, like Hosea was an object lesson. So for this, I will lament. So Micah says, I will lament, I will wail. We'll see that word lament appear twice and mourn appear once. So there's a lot of lamenting and mourning. This is a prophet who doesn't just give his prophecy and walks away. He is involved with his people enough to cry out for them, shout out for them, try to convince them to change. But very often, you know, no one's listening. So for this, I will lament and wail. I will go barefoot and naked. Here you go. He's an object lesson. I will walk bare feet. Everybody say, Micah, what's wrong with you? Micah, why are you walking naked with just a loincloth? We know that even the prophet Isaiah in chapter 20 verse 16 strips down to a loincloth and then you're forced to turn around and say, what's wrong with Father Warner? Why is he walking in his underwear? And I say, oh, I finally got your attention, have I? Now let me tell you what God is going to do. And I'm mourning and wailing because he is going to strip you naked too. That's the whole point being made. So <coughs> I will make lamentations like a jackal and mourning like an ostrich for her wound verse 9 mark this in your bible for her wound is incurable your disease of sin has now become incurable because they do not bring that sin to god because they do not bring they do not want a change of heart so your wound is incurable it has come to judah that same wound which was a wound of the northern kingdom of, of Samaria, of Israel, has now come down south. This is how sin spreads. You invite sin into your house and one by one members of your family fall into sin. Yeah, and this is something we need to be very careful of. Yeah, many often people say, it's only a white lie, Father. It's a small thing, Father. Why are you all being so prudish about it? You need to fight sin in every form. You look at a, a, a picture with lust in your eyes, you're watching pornography after that, then you want to act on it. And it just goes on. And it's a struggle that we all face. It's a real struggle that we face. So um, here we are. For her wound is incurable. It has come to Judah. It has reached the gates of my people, Jerusalem. And God is saying, you know, I have to fight against now the northern kingdom. I have to destroy you because, you know, you have polluted yourself. And now you're polluting my, my holy city, Jerusalem. But unfortunately, Jerusalem succumbed to the pollution. We know that in 150 years, Babylon will destroy Jerusalem uh, under God's will. So now you're going to hear, as I spoke of that wailing Yatra, one city after the other. And really, all these cities, when you, when you read it in the Hebrew text, these sound very familiar to words. So basically he's punning and I'm going to guide you through the puns yeah, that he's making. So we're going to go from one uh, city of Judah to the other and God is saying, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to you. You, you know, I'm going to really punish you. So let's watch. Let's read uh, ch chapter 10, uh, sorry, chapter 1 verse 10. Tell it not in Gath. Now, uh, as I said, these are all the towns and cities of Judah. So tell it not in Gath. Weep not at all. In Beth, La Afra, okay, Beth is house of. Now, Afra uh, was, it sounded in Hebrew like dust. So it sounds like the house of dust. So in Beth La Afra, you roll yourself up in the dust since you sound like you're from the dust, God says. And now you see God really being sarcastic, merciless. Uh, verse 11, pass on your ways, inhabitants of Shafir. Shafir sounded like the word beautiful in Hebrew. He says, Pass on your, your ways, inhabitants of Shafir, in nakedness and shame. You thought you were beautiful? You're going to walk in nakedness and shame, says God. The inhabitants of Zanan. Zanan sounded like exit or go out, you know. So God says the inhabitants of Zanan do not come forth. You think you're going to come forth? You're going to get out. You're going to go out in exile. Then Beth Ezel. Beth Ezel was, it really means a city that is nearby, a nearby city. So God is saying, you think you are nearby, you'll be the first one to be run over by the Assyrians. So Bethesel is wailing and shall remove its support from you. 
verse 12 for the inhabitants of Maroth Mar is bitter no so uh, in Hebrew it sounds like bitter the bitter wells that Moses uh, and the people encountered so from for the inhabitants of Maroth wait anxiously for good yet disaster has come down from the Lord you are waiting for good things bitterness is going to come to the gates of Jerusalem verse 13 harness the steed to the chariots harness the horse to the chariots inhabitants of Lashish now Lashish was a fortified city and uh, Lashish really sounds like let's go to the horses you know let's let's take refuge to the horses and God is saying Lashish it was the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion you were the ones Lashish that brought sin to Jerusalem for in you were found the transgressions of Israel and you think you will flee on your horses you are not going anywhere verse 14 therefore you shall give parting gifts to Moresheth Gat now Moresheth is from where the prophet Micah came and Moresheth in Hebrew sounds like betrothed so you think you are going to give wedding gifts to uh, but you're not going to give wedding gifts you are going to give parting gifts to each other the houses of Akzib shall be a deception Akzib itself in Hebrew sounded like the word deception so you are going to be like deception to your very kings verse 15 I will again bring a conqueror upon you we know today that that conqueror was um, uh, since we are, was the Babylonians yeah we are talking now to the southern kingdom but we are not sure when the Babylonians um, uh, yes we know in 586 they finally came and they destroyed so I will bring a conqueror upon you inhabitants of Mareshash and Mareshash really sounds like in Hebrew it sounds like an heir so God says you think you're going to be the heir you're not going to be the heir at all you're going to be taken over by another nation and and the glory of Israel shall come to you sorry let me read that I will bring con a conqueror upon you inhabitants of Mareshash the glory of Israel shall come to Adulam so Adulam was a place where King David took refuge finally verse 16 and we're going to end make yourselves bald and cut off your hair for your pampered children make yourself as bald as the eagle God says you your children you'll have pampered yourselves make yourselves bald as bald as an eagle is not a bit of hair on your head for they have gone from you into exile so Judah like its brothers in the northern kingdom will be taken into exile not uh, very comfortable words but words that we need to understand so remember Micah is prophesying to the southern kingdom uh, he his counterpart in that sense is the prophet Isaiah and at the same time Hosea was Hosea and Amos were prophesying to the people in the northern kingdom uh, we know that once uh, Amos in, in about 20 years after Amos uh, prophesied the northern kingdom or 50 years sorry the northern kingdom was completely destroyed so I hope you enjoy this tomorrow I'm going to do chapter 2 and maybe if I have time I will try to also do chapter 3 um, hope you have a lovely evening God bless you the Father Son the Holy Spirit Amen I said hope you have a lovely evening because as I keep reminding you I record the evening before also look in the description box today it's just below this video you'll see the word more click on it you'll find the word more again click on it it'll open up the entire description box and I have given you both the text version and I have given you the video versions for the readings uh, that you will find at Mass and the video teachings that you will find at Mass when you go to Mass. Bye everybody.